Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with audio file in Pixel Composer. So the ability to work with audio file has been introduced in Pixel Composer 1.14, if I remember correctly. However, the workflow has been changed since then. So I want you to be at least on 1.15.4, and this video will be on 1.15.4.1. Uh, so you may notice that this video is actually on the earlier update version than the previous one. The previous one, the video on the fracture animation is on 1.15.5. So I record and edit this video before the previous one, though I haven't uploaded yet. I think everything should work exactly the same here. One thing that might be different, especially compared to the next stable 1.16 version, is the 3D workflow. It may change a little bit. If there's a case, I may have to re redo this video again. Okay, that's probably why I haven't uploaded yet. But it should work for now. Anyway, let's continue. To import your audio file, the Pixel Composer, you can do the same things as any other data type. You can just drag in your audio file into the Pixel Composer interface. And the support format for audio file in the composer is the WAV file, WAV file, 8 or 16 bit mono or stereo file. So if you have like different audio type or different audio like bit or channels, like you know, surround sound and stuff like that, you have to use software like Audacity to re export it. And when you import your audio file in the Pixel composer, it will create this WAV file in. Already, when you try to play your animation, you should be able to hear the audio being played. You can also mute that by selecting the node and then click on this play with timeline button which you mute it so that you don't have to hear it all the time in the inspector you will see this button which allows you to sync the length of your animation to match the length of your audio you can also have an option to convert the audio to mono sound in our case the audio is already mono as you can see here yeah, one channels so we don't have to do anything of course you can also work with the stereo file but then you will have to work with twice the amount of data so the output from this node is a new data type that we call audio bit it have this audio icon and you cannot use this audio bit as if you have to connect it to another node that we call audio window so by default this audio windows we have this cursor and it will sample a section of your audio file and you can see here this section is 4096 bit long right but the output is only 256 number because of these step values this 16 step means that it will already sample one values every 16 bit and this is to make the output not too big by default, it, will have, it should have this match timeline on. This match timeline setting, which just means that when you move your timeline around, the cursor will follow that. If you don't have this, then you have to set the location of your cursor by yourself. Now the output of this node is a bit array. If you hold shift, you will be able to see the content inside and it's simply just an array of number. Right? And each number here is an amplitude of each bit. Now to visualize this number, we can use our bind graph node. So we can just bind graph. This node will allow you to plot an array of number into a bar chart or a graph. So we can connect the bit array to bind graph. Immediately we will see some bar being drawn here, right? However, the bar is very really small. Because again, when you look at the values here, it's just 0, 0.0 something. It's really small, right? So we can select the bar graph and then go to the scale values and increase it. And we will start to see the bar become bigger. The next problem is that we only see like seven different bar here we have 256 number so we might want to reduce the spacing and reduce the width of our bar to be able to see more data of course we can also increase our dimension increase the size as well so let's go through different properties in this node for a little bit the first important thing is the type right now it is a bar chart you can also change it to a graph which will plot a line from one data to another instead of drawing a rectangles Right, you can increase the spacing here to see it clearer. The next setting is about the orientation of your graph. You can move the graph around. You can also change the direction. Or you can use custom path. You can have a new path node. And then connect the path data into this node. Now you'll be able to draw a path that your graph will draw in. Like this. And when working with graph, you might also want to toggle the loop on. Because as you can see here, the first data and the last data is not connected, right? We can just enable loop so that it just draw the connection from the first one and the last one. This smooth property doesn't work much. It just smooth out value between each data. I will show you how to smooth the data itself later. And next here is the display setting. You can change the base color. You can change the color per each samples. You can also keep it color based on the current values. So for example, if it's zero, it should be white. If it's one, it could be red. However, when you change this, you will see that there is have no change. 
and that's because the value range is set from 0 to 1. So if the value is 0, it's going to be white. If the value is 1, it's going to be red. However, our data is really small. So all of the value will just be piled up at around these white colors. So we can reduce the value range, maybe 0 0.01. Now you can see that the high values now have the color red. Let's remove the part and disable the loop. And now you can see that the high value are now red. Then we have the line thickness. They have the spacing value that you can see again. The option to add in the background. Or of course, you can also add in the background while yourself using blend node. And this is a simple way to plot graph of your information, not just the audio information, but it supports any array of number you can create too. So this kind of graph is a plot of graph on time domain. So the x-axis here is just a progress of time, right? And the y-axis here is an amplitude of each bit over time. But what if you want to convert it to a frequency domain? You want to see like how loud the high frequency is, how loud the low frequency is. You can also do that using a node called FFT, which stands for a fast Fourier transform, which is a way of transforming an area of data or, you know, a series of signals from time domain to frequency domain. So we plug it in. The first thing you will notice is that the size of the output got half or around half from 256 to 129. And when we try to plot it into a graph, you will see that the graph now look completely different. Now, if you hear this sound, the sound that I import here is just a combination of two sine waves. However, when you use this FFT, you will see that the result is uh, kind of messy, right? Even though it's only contained two sine waves, so it should only have two peak, our output here having a lot of peak. And that is a result from having a high number of steps. Because when you're not sampling each data directly, you're sampling once every 16 uh, bit, you're going to introduce this kind of noise. So to fix that, of course, you can just reduce the number of steps. But when you reduce the step, you will also increase the number of, of output array. So you reduce the step and also reduce the, the width. So we can just have to do the six bit at one step. One step here, in this case, means that we are sampling every single bit. Now, immediately, we can already see that the peak are way smoother, right? And we already have see, and we can already see two peak. So we do the scale a little bit. When we start playing our animation, when we click play our sound, you will see these two peak clearly. Now, one thing you will see is that the peak is like really peak, right? <laughs> it's really peaky because it's just one PO sine wave. If you want to spread out the value a little bit for, you know, visualization reason, you can use another node that called Array Convolute. So this Array Convolute will allow you to apply convolution over your array. You can think of it like some kind of filter that applies to each of the value in that array. In our case, we're going to put in the original number we get from the FFT node. And then the kernel, we will use expression so that we can type in the array and we can just try one. But in the result here, you will see that there's no change. But if you try to add in something like 111, you will see now that our peak got expand from a single peak is now being a little bit wider, right? But it's also higher. And that's because the sum of our kernel is higher than one. So our the result amplitude is larger, right? This is like a very basic blur technique. As you can see here, the sum of value in our kernel is one and the resulting graph kind of like spread out a little bit. Now, if you want it to blur it even more, you can create a larger kernel there's different like functions that give you a size, different size kernel. Sometimes we have like Gaussian function. Sometimes it can just be like a linear function, a smooth step function, blah, blah, blah. But we don't have to worry too much about it. Instead of just typing in larger and larger kernel, we can just simply duplicate this node and then apply it again and then duplicate this node. It's gonna give you an error because there's no values here, but we can just ignore that. And you can see here, our value is like kind of spread out now. How our value have shape, right? It looks like triangles, but that's, that's because our kernel is not particularly smooth, so we can just maybe reduce the middle. Again, we don't have to worry too much that the sum is not one because we can just change the scale after. We are not doing like mathematical analytics here. We can just change it to make it look good. But now you can see that the result is now way smoother than the original, which is like just sharp peak. And now we just spread out a little bit. Right, this is a very simple uh, visualization. The next node that I want to cover is audio volumes. So we can just type audio volumes here. This node will also take in an array of audio bit and then output a single values of the loudness of that bit, of that array bit in decibel. So we can just connect out the audio windows, put it in here. Now because the unit is in decibel, so it's gonna be some negative values. So we might want to calculate this, put it in some equation, which we can do it by dragging out the values. And then we can just press equal which will tell our piece of composer to create an equation node. So let's say negative x minus 20. And the x here will just be the value from the input that we're dragging it out. 
So here we just apply negative and then divided by something. And then we can use this value in some other node, like maybe we have a shape. Now we can scale object based on the loudness of the current sound, right? However, in this case, our sound is pretty like linear. There's not a lot of change in the volumes, so the object doesn't move very much. But it can be useful if you have like a conversation or stuff like that to make things move, to make things scale based on the, the volume of the current sound. The next thing you would do is you can also do 3D stuff. Now, I haven't made a video about the new 3D workflow yet, so this part may be a little bit confusing, but I will try to make it as simple as possible. So the new 3D workflow is, I mean, a little bit more involved, but it gives you more flexibility. So we will start with 3D Cube. And when you double click on the 3D node, instead of just previewing the result, it will put your preview seed in this 3D inspector mode. Now we can add it to 3D repeat, which as the name suggests, we will repeat our object. In this case, we want to have 32 copies of it, and we will shift each copy by one unit. Also, we might want it to be smaller. Let's just say by two, shift each piece by zero three, and then change the starting position like this. Now we will use this frequency information to scale our object based on the, the frequency. The first thing is that we only have 32 objects, right? but our frequency information have 129. So one thing we can do is we can do array sample, which will allow you to sample an array into a smaller array. We change the step to four, that means that we're going to select one value every four values, and now our array is only 32 units. However, the array we got here is just a linear array, right? What we want, if we want an array of a vector 3, which will tell you the scale in x, y, and c. So, we're going to use an array composite node. This array composite node allows you to apply array or expand array with another array. Like, for example, we can have array of 1, 2, 3, and we compose it with array of 1, 0. And what we got here is that 1, you now become one zero, two, you will multiply with each value, become two zero, and three, you also become three zero. Now, instead of having this array, you will plug in the array we got, and we will compose it with a zero, zero, one. Because we want to scale our object in C axis, right? So the X and Y axis will be the same, to be zero, and C axis will be each of these values. And you might also want to scale it up to say the value is just zero point one, right? And then we will use these values inside the 3D repeat node. In this transform option, we go to scale, and then we drag in our array to the scale. Already you will see that our cube is got scale in C-axis based on the value from this array. So we can play the animation. Next is we want to render it out as an image. So we're gonna add 3D camera node. This 3D camera node take in a 3D object and then output the render scene or render image. So we can plug in this 3D object in the 3D camera, double click it to preview. You will see that we have a round object. You can move it around with transform tool or we can rotate it with the rotate tool. We also have an option to make this camera setup a bit easier in this positioning mode. You can change it to position plus look at and now you don't have to set the rotation by yourself. The camera will just rotate itself to look at any point you want. Now in the node preview here, you will see that the result here doesn't have any light at all, right? Even in this preview, it doesn't have any light. When you double click on other node, you will see that there is light, right? But when you double click on the camera, there's no light because we don't have any light in our scene. So let's add in the light by search for light. We're gonna use directional light, though we cannot just add the light in here because this node only receives one input. So we need a node called 3D scene, which allows you to compose multiple objects in the same scene. So we put in our object, put in the light, and then send the scene to the camera. Now we will start seeing some light. So we can just move our directional light around. And now our output already have some light in it. Of course, because our output, our output is only 32 by 32 pixel, the result is really pixelated. So you can just, you know, increase the resolution. And now we got a render image of our 3D visualization. You can also change the material or the color of our, our cube from the beginning here. And you can see there is this material input, and this material can just be any image. So we can just have any solid color, plug it in the material, and now our cube is green. Because you can just make it anything, you can make it a gradient. And now you've got a gradient. And one thing of note is that because the anchor point of our cube is in the middle, when you click on a cube object, you will see that the anchor is 0, 0, 0. It's at origin. So when you scale our Q, it's scaled in all axes equally. And you can see here when you scale in C axis, it's scaled up and down equally. If you just want to scale it up, you have to change the anchor. You can just set it to negative 0 0.5. Now the anchor point will be in the bottom. And when it scale, it only will scale upward. And now you got the 3D visualization using Pixel Composer. And of course, because the output of this node are just an array of number, you can also use array manipulation. You can also use any iteration node 
You can also do it, use it for any other type of visualization as well. This is just an example of what you can do with the default node. So that will be all for this video. So thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.